Evening everyone, welcome once again to the Harvey Podcast. Um, thought I'd have we go on a tag, um, I haven't been involved in these in a while, so thought I'd create one, just a bit of a laugh. Um, I'm not going to tag anybody specifically, just uh, you see it, you want to get involved, crack on. That's what we're all about that anyway. Um, so the host of the most tags, so this is basically content creators, anyone that's found themselves coming to the forefront, you know, being the face of the show, so to speak. Um, that could be full-time, can be partnership with someone else, it can, it can just be anything really, uh, instructional videos, not necessarily hard, just uh, open the doors up, you know, you know me, love seeing people create, love different ideas and what people come up with, and more importantly, seeing your inspirations. So, let's get started with the questions. Um, number one, yeah, I created this and I'm having to read my own questions. Professional as always. What prompted you to step into the line, into the spotlight? So I, I've been in front of this, being like person in charge of things or the face. Never really been my interest. More interested in the back, sort of back stuff, the production side of things, the technology and how things work. You know, I've seen podcasting for years, and the whole thing just fascinated me. How it's went, you know, how it went from tape decks. The, this is just absolutely amazing. So, of course, I'm going to get you know the nerdy side of me wanting to get involved with it. So, circumstances really I started out helping somebody else. Um, I'll talk about that more in the next question. But um, started helping somebody else. The more things progressed, it just made sense uh, for me to be the host as a narrator. I was introducing things. So rather than writing stuff down and trying to find someone else, you know, what I mean, the more cogs you put in the machine, the more complicated it gets. So you find yourself it's more expedient <coughs> to be that person in the front that's kind of what brought me into it once you get used to this thing and actually just opening your mouth and speaking and especially in like a silent room it's really unnerving at first once you get over that it's actually quite enjoyable and once you get past listening and looking at yourself uh, with more of a critical eye you don't get a self-conscious about it, it just is a thing and I definitely don't get big headed about it or any illusions of grandeur, just it's what I do, so it was more out of necessity, but obviously I like making content now. Um more of, not for the adulation of people, just more the fact of making it and putting it out there and connecting with a few folk and seeing where it goes. Number two, is this your first rodeo? Uh no. Back in twenty thirteen, uh there was another podcast, um sort of telling stories actually uh, there was one guy narrating uh, and he started doing radio plays and I sort of got an idea uh, first of all I started playing about sound effects hung them out and sent them his way here how about this here this is something really cool and did a bit of foley which I've never done before limited scale obviously but um, cardboard tubes and gravel and boxes and stuff to make food steps and doing weird things just having fun because I love those old uh, radio shows um, just and also the fact that they did it live and they did all the effects live as well and they might do work you know for that 20 minute segment just absolutely amazing just love all that old timey stuff so that's how I started eventually the, the segment I got, got a few people together we started performing radio plays live and then people started submitting their own stories and then it just grew and grew and then eventually I became its own podcast and then things ran its course I was 7 or 8 years doing that things ran its course stuff for a bit and then Cameron my buddy we've been involved in that before and then decided uh, to start this one up so not this as well sort of I've helped out a few other podcasts so been about for a bit but this is uh, uh, the latest iteration so to speak hopefully going from strength to strength uh, we'll just see everything pick it up uh, by the week and we're getting more segments and stuff so we'll keep this going as long as people are interested in it and it remains like there's always something new and vital we'll keep cracking on so Hopefully, uh, keep on this one for a good bit, yep. Number three. What is the th- most satisfying thing about being the host? <coughs> Suppose the freedom, for example, this tag, I just decided to create it, put it out there. So, <coughs> didn't have to ask anyone's permission. Uh, I'm not having to go through the layers, you know, it's just, okay, let's do something. It works, it works, it doesn't, it doesn't. Um, just sort of having that freedom and control to express yourself. Um, good thing about it. Also, never ask anybody to do something you're not prepared to do yourself, so 
rather than asking someone else to be the host and be in the background pulling the strings you know at least if you if you have that sort of mind to step up yourself do it uh, that's good you know satisfying feeling number four what has being a host helped you grow as a person well first of all confidence you know like i said this thing can be terrifying i don't know there's a lot of people still intimidated by it even like over the last two years more and more technology has been uh, utilized so things like zoom team meetings online stuff and there's still people like terrified of getting on their camera and nervous about the whole thing so getting that confidence to be able to do it definitely helps you in the long run being able to speak you know there's nobody giving me response cubex right now being able to actually do that helps you as a person because you can do that then you can stand up you can talk in front of a group of people you can put your point across you think about things a bit more um also in terms of the media uh, you know i've watched thousands about thousands of movies but it's only until really until lately that i've actually started thinking about what i'm watching a bit more a bit more of a critical eye because reviewing movies you have to pay a bit more attention so uh, you've probably seen that in like the earlier iterations uh, the horror he talks about <laughs> I'm sitting scratching my head going I've seen that movie but I can't remember and I'm forgetting names and places and events and now as I'm watching things I'm paying a bit more attention so therefore I'm being a bit more thoughtful a bit more thoughtful about the material I consume so I'm not just sitting like you'll never see me watching daytime TV that's just not what I'm about um, like every popcorn flick going I'm not going to watch that you know what I mean I'm a bit more discerning than the taste because time's precious and how you spend your time so Growing as a person, more appreciated how I spend my time, what to do with it, and that all just helps you. Number five, what is the most difficult aspect of being the host? Um, I suppose trying to get yourself to come across like you need to up your energy so you even come across as normal um, with this thing, and I find that difficult to do at times because I'm a believe it or not quite a private person and I'm a head down get on walk type person so I do it when I have to I can step out crowd of people give talks all that there but it is draining you know I'm an introvert at the end of the day so giving that le level of energy out saps me and then like, I find myself uh, by some most recent job there was, like, dealing with people all day having to take that energy so I find myself coming home just pff, zonk having to recharge the batteries for the next day just to carry on so that aspect's challenging um Sorry, difficult. Also, just like for example, I'm terrible at reading off scripts. That's why I do a lot of stuff ad hoc. I know one aspect is more natural, but I just I feel like I come across too robotic uh, reading off scripts. So that's a difficult thing. I know a lot of people can do that. Um, difficult thing as well, just not trying not to compare yourself to others. So you see other people making success, especially if it's like a similar field or uh, genre, and you're like. What am I doing wrong? You know, <laughs> why am I not getting the same hits as them? And it's like, you can't think like that for a start because you do, you'll drive yourself potty. And then you're doing it for the wrong reasons. But that's a difficult thing as well. And then the more I've talked about it, the sort of toxic na nature of social media and just random people, like, uh, it's really tricky to like come across that, especially when, like, when I'm out in real life, I mind my own business, I don't get in people's faces. I don't deal well with antagonism, so I, I avoid conflict because it's not good and you go into it. So when that's already there and there's people in Bolden who wouldn't say booty a goose when they're in the street or like brave enough to like start calling your names, they're like, you know, it's really difficult. Uh, number six, similar sort of question, but what has been your biggest host based challenge? Um, like I said earlier, look, giving the energy off, um, I like my presentation skills to be better. Definitely, I'd love to be able to like amp that up. Uh, just more to just to be more entertaining, and also, I am passionate about things, so try and give that passion across without sounding like completely loony. Uh, technology, uh, trying to marry the technology to get things happening like well live streams has been a major learning curve <laughs> it sounds simple enough you press a button go live but you've all uh, 
tweaks and getting the frame rates right because if you don't everything drops and crashes and the, getting your technology like I've, I found myself that this is how far I've had to go to get the stage is actually getting the computer screwdriver opening out replacing cards and stuff you know and if you're not into that it's a whole new thing and also when you're spending money and then you don't want to break something and very at first about you know didn't have much money growing up parents tried their best but still you had something you valued it so just to be willy nilly and wreck stuff I'm very adverse to that so the thought of like buying stuff and putting it in and breaking it and then having to uh, like I had to get two different PCI cards to get this uh, connection going and things like that just uh, really can be really frustrating but when you get through the other side of it back to growing as a person learning it going through the trial and getting there on the other side you're better for it and then it's not so scary next time then you're ready for the next challenge which is always good what would make you sorry number seven what would make you stop um i think when you just don't get any enjoyment out of it, when if this becomes a job instead of a a hobby and i don't mean that there's people do this for a living but if your job becomes that you don't want the do it anymore it becomes a chore it becomes a struggle and there's no like satisfaction out of it like irrespective of how many views or watches or we're still growing and it's good to see that every you know every month brings more people on board and uh, get involved with us but I get the satisfaction from when I put something together like this and it's edited it goes together and it goes out I've created something I've put it out there what happens happens you know but the minute I lose that satisfaction um, the minute I don't enjoy interacting with people to you know interact with a lot of authors and creators trying a lot of groups uh, special interest groups you know in horror that you know try and promote the podcast so I find myself interacting with people if I find that not to be enjoyable I know there are negative aspects but most of it is positive and a lot of people appreciate what we're doing you, you get a thank you the minute that becomes meaningless then it's time to stop and I have done it like uh, back to the previous question I've done a couple of podcast iterations and you know when it's time to stop you know when you're beating a dead horse where it's going no further and it just becomes running the mill so once it becomes a gap then I'll stop but it doesn't mean I'll stop creating there could be a new iteration there could be something out there or maybe podcasting mightn't be the thing you know it could be another creative project but I think if you've got a creative energy, you don't need to. This doesn't need to own you. That makes sense. It's something you own and can enjoy, and therefore you can walk away from it. And not as long as you've given it your best effort, and there's no dramas. I mean, there's no shame in it whatsoever. Number eight. What would you like to do better? Um, kind of touched on this already. But that's my nice scatter brain again. First of all, I don't know as I'm getting older, but my brain is getting more and more frazzled like i'm forgetting stuff and i'm, I'm quite a stringent organized um methodical person and i don't know just lately like my head i don't know whether it's the last two years or the last six months but pff, bloody hell man uh, i need to get that sorted out so that's one thing definitely need to do better get back to my old self uh like i mentioned the energy on the screen um i'd love to be able to read better from auto cues that way i can structure things out without looking robotic because the problem is cameras here <laughs> screens are so if you're looking at the screen you're not looking up here and it looks weird and you don't want to be like bleh, 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 head down you know it's love to do that better um always with the production that you probably see that i'm always tweaking um the backgrounds and the intros and uh playing about the music a bit you know just to get that all timed and honed and get that better uh, I don't think it'll ever happen but I'd love to get into full animation you know that'd be amazing just be at that point where just a full animated production but that's once again it's whole time thing when you do that you're talking about a year probably before you put something out and that's you know just not feasible and finally number nine what inspires you to keep going um like I said it's enjoyable like what else could be doing on Friday night? I'm just sitting watching the goggle box. I do watch movies and that and enjoy it, hanging out with people. But actually doing something productive, seeing the end result of it, creating content, putting it out there, 
that's what keeps me going. Um, a lot of authors, you know, I work with, they appreciate that we're trying to help promote them and the fact that I'm helping somebody who, like, if you're an independent creator, the odds are stacked against you. You know, I mean, the big corporations also recently flipping nastiness of people who, I, I can't stand people who have their nose up in the air and look down on others. Really winds me up. <laughs> it's something, if you're a snob, don't come near me. I really, uh, I have no time for you. I have no time for snobby people. Uh, which is funny because most of my working career involves working with snobby people. <laughs> so it's, uh, the office is a fun environment, but there you go. Yeah, just just to be part, you know, just to be part of creation, to be making something. Um, and I don't care if 10 people listen to it, at least that's 10 people that might appreciate what I do. If I get someone else to pick up a pen or create or have a go at this or come on the show for a chat and they've never done it before, then that's what keeps me going because I've inspired somebody else to do something. So it's worthwhile. And just for myself, you know, like I said, I actually enjoy the whole creation process. I like, uh, what I was thinking about is tag, you know, thinking about the questions and that, and you know, some of them are something rare again, but just something that, you know, is out there. I've thought of it, I've created it, I enjoy doing it. So, there you go, that was that tag, and like I said, um, I'll share in my groups and stuff. Open call, just you want to take part. Uh, what I would ask you to do though is just to make life easier. If you're making a video response, would you comment on this one with the link so that I can check it out? Because the last one I made, um, it's actually people popping up I didn't even realize, and I probably missed a load who made uh, uh, took part in the tag, didn't even know who they were. I also got a, a subscribe to a lot of new channels from people I got in touch with. So, just do me a favor. Put the comment in so that I can see the video and other folks that are watching this can see the video and then I can go and link and comment back and all that good stuff. You know, that's that's the whole point of these tags is to get a bit of connection going and sharing channels and like I said, it's not just down to horror. There's loads of people that find themselves coming like the star of the show, if you want to use those terms. Um, love to hear from you, love to hear about your experiences and especially other genres, where's the commonality with this, where, where do we differ? You know, I love love sharing ideas and getting idea, uh, getting that across. So please get involved. And uh, until next time, keep it creepy, keep it horrific.